Can you search? Just give me a second, sir. We are live, sir. Hello, friends. I am Dr. Ajay Adar, anesthesia faculty at DBMCI. So, today we are going to discuss uh, uh, your anesthesia questions. And hope anesthesia questions were largely easy and uh, straightforward. So, what we could manage to get four questions. Later, if you have more questions, you can post and discuss with me. So let's start uh, with the question number one. Which of the following drug? I think it is. Uh, it down. Which of the following drug undergoes Hoffman degradation? Cisatracurium, Mivacurium, Pancuronium, or Vicuronium? Atracurium and Cisatracurium are unique agents which undergoes Hoffman degradation. And what is the meaning of Hoffman degradation? Meaning of Hoffman degradation is spontaneous degradation. Means it is not dependent on any enzyme for their metabolism. Automatically with time, they keep on getting degraded by themselves. So the advantage is that they are not dependent on liver functions for their metabolism making them as a muscle relaxant of choice for liver failure patients and automatic degradation means there is no risk of accumulation. So that also makes them muscle relaxant of choice for renal failure. So atracurium and cis atracurium are two muscle relaxants which are metabolized by Hoffman degradation. Now, what is the difference between atracurium and cisatracurium? Cisatracurium is an, as the name suggests, is an isomer of atracurium with the advantage that it does not release histamine, no histamine release, while atracurium can release histamine. Then one of the metabolic product of atracurium and cisatracurium, that is ladinosine, can cross blood-brain barrier to cause convulsions. Otherwise, these non-depolarizers, they are quaternary aluminum compounds that do not cause the blood brain barrier or placental barrier. However, one of the metabolic products of this atracurium and cisatracurium, that is ladonosine, can cross blood brain barrier to cause convulsions. Now, the advantage of cisatracurium is that ladinosine production is one-fifth. So, one-fifth Ladonosine production. Fine. So no stamina release and one-fifth ladinosine production definitely will make cis atracurium to be always preferred over atracurium. And anesthetic properties of both are similar. That means both are metabolized by Hoffman degradation. Duration of action is also same. So in this question, they have asked which one undergoes Hoffman degradation. So, of course, it is cis atracurium. It's a very straightforward question. Question number two antidote of benzodiazepine overdose, overdose is preferably by plumazenil, naloxone, naltrexone, pomipazole. Benzodiazepine overdose, you all know, is treated by flumazenil. So, flumazenil is a specific benzodiazepine antagonist that is used for benzodiazepine overdoses. And the benzodiazepine that is used in anesthesia nowadays is only midazolam. During intraoperative period, we are only and only using midazolam. Diazepam or lorazepam, that may be used for pre-medication as tablets. However, IV, we are only and only using midazolam. And the reason why midazolam 
because its half life is short half life is around 2 hours while that of diazepam you know is 36 hours that of lorazepam is 20 hours so there is no risk of respiratory depression in post operative period second advantage midazolam is a water based preparation so water based preparation means injection is painless while diazepam and lorazepam they are oil based preparations so their injections was painful and as i mentioned that flumazenil is the specific antagonist for benzodiazepine poison naloxone naltrexone these are opioid antagonists naloxone being short acting while naltrexone being long acting question number 3 fluid of choice for elective surgery is preferably blood clot crystalloid ffp again very much expected question because there is a major change in surgery in intraoperative period we use fluid for two purposes maintenance and replacement maintenance fluid is given by the same standard formula of 4 to 1 that you all know and must have read in many subject physiology medicine 4 to 1 means 0 to 10 kg fluid is given at a rate of 4 ml per kg per hour 10 to 20 at a rate of 2 ml per kg per hour and more than 20 kg fluid is given at a rate of 1 ml per kg per hour so this is called as 4 to 1 formula so fluid is given by 4 to 4 4 to 1 formula for maintenance and replacement fluid we calculate whatever is the blood loss and accordingly we keep on replacing now replacement fluid can be crystalloids or colloids and blood and blood you know we only give if volume loss is more than 20% so less than 20% volume loss is treated by either crystalloids or colloids and definitely crystalloids are prefer or colloids for many reasons the most important being i will say is that crystalloids they replace intravascular as well as extravascular volume because the mechanism of action of colloids is that colloids are hypotonic so because of their hypertonicity they get retained in vascular compartment so they get retained in vascular compartment so we draw fluid from extravascular to intravascular space so we deplete the extravascular volume and cellular hydration you would know depends on extravascular volume and it is also very well proven fact that in shock it is not only the intravascular volume which is lost extravascular volume is also lost so there is the beauty of crystalloid that crystalloid they not only maintain the intravascular volume they also maintain the extravascular volume so crystalloids maintain intravascular volume and extravascular volume both while colloids can further deplete extravascular volume so that's a main advantage of preferring crystalloids that they maintain intravascular as well as extravascular volume and that is why you know that crystalloids they are given in a ratio of 2 is to 1 means they are being given as twice means that this standard ml blood loss you have to replace it with 1 liter because half of the volume is going to enter the extravascular space then incidence of allergic reactions is not there with crystalloid while it is there with colloid then all, all know that high doses this all colloids they can cause renal failure they can precipitate renal failure and then there are many colloids which can inhibit with inhibit the coagulation and interfere with cross matching so that issue is also not there with crystalloids so now you can very well understand that crystalloids are always preferred over colloid so you can say colloids are only reserved for severe shock
means say BP is very low, 20, 30. That time you will not think of maintaining extravascular volume. That time you have to maintain intravascular volume at any cost so that at least oxygen reaches in and heart. Fine. So otherwise, Krishna. Now the most important question, which actually was what I was asking question is that which is the best fluid they should have asked. So best fluid either for maintenance as well as replacement is ringer lactate. Best crystalloid is ringer lactate. Why? Because ringer lactate is most near to body fluids. So in your books for maintenance, it is possible that you may find different fluids for pediatric age group, different fluid for adults. And similarly, you may find different fluids for general anesthesia and different fluid for regional anesthesia. But that is not true nowadays. Nowadays, fluid of choice for maintenance is ringer lactate irrespective of the age, irrespective of the kind of anesthesia. And similarly, replacement fluid is also ringer lactate. So what actually I was expecting in this question is that they are going to ask which fluid. However, they have made it a little more easier, you can say, for you by giving crystalloid rather than asking that which crystalloid. So, of course, answer is C. Question number four. Identify the classification. Malampat score, elder score, Ramsey scores that is score. Regarding these choices, we are not very sure because actually, uh, I think only Aldrade score I could manage to get, but uh, other, I don't think, uh, may be correct choices because uh, students were not sure about the other choices. But definitely, yes, Malampati score and Aldrade score, who they were sure about. Whether they asked Ramsey score or Z score, that we are not very sure about it. Anyway, that's not important. Important is what is this classification? You know, one of the very important part of pre-operative assessment is the airway assessment. Because airway management is absolutely our responsibility. So we should assess airway beforehand nicely so that you don't land up in any trouble at that time. Because airway catastrophe can lead to hypoxic brain damage or can even lead to death. So there are three parameters which we are using for airway assessment. Normally there are seven to eight parameters. But uh, at your level, at basic level, you can say three things which must be done for airway assessment. One among those is Mallampatti classification. So Mallampatti classification is basically done to assess the mouth opening. So what do we do? We ask the patient to open mouth as wide as possible and looking at the structure scene. In fact, nowadays I will say not Mallampatti. Actually, it is modified Mallampatti. Because I have seen a question where they have given malampati as well as modified malampati as a last choice. And many students, they attempted malampati and <clears throat> answer was actually modified malampati. So I'll tell you the difference. Basically, in malampati score, they say three things. So we ask the patient to open mouth as wide as possible. I'm talking of malampati. So we see three things. That is tonsillar pillars. uvula and soft palate. These three structures we see, but in modified malampati, we see fourth structure and that is fossas. And fossas, you know, is the uh, entry point to oropharynx. So we see these structures. Now, which structure is seen in which kind of category? I don't think that much details is required for you. However, you have to understand that in modified in modified malampati 1 and 2, mouth opening is adequate. Actually, simple to you can say, we can see four structures in 1, 3 in uh, 2, 2 in 1 and nothing in class 4. So, class 1 and class 2, mouth opening is adequate. So, oral intubation is easy. Oral intubation will be easy. Class 3, mouth opening is little restricted. So, oral intubation will be difficult. And class 4, there is no mouth opening. Then how you will place your laryngoscope and endotracheal tube? So, oral intubation becomes impossible. So, that is just basic. I don't think they will ask you which structures are seen in class 2, which is seen in class 3. 
maximum they could have asked from you that what this classification is and that is what the easiest question they'd ask from you that which actually this classification so this is basically simple modified malam patti classification little difficult question they could have asked is that what all structures are seen except they could have given a structure and except and maximum they could have asked is that if the patient is class 1 in uh, means in a clinical form if the patient is class 1 then should or oral intubation be easy or difficult or say patient is class 4 will we be able to intubate the patient through oral route or no of course not so if not from oral route then either we have a nasal intubation option and if that is not also possible then we have to directly go for tracheostomy so it's malam patti score and alternate score is used for post operative recovery i don't know the other choices are correct or not rams score is for icu sedation and z score you know is for osteoporosis so these are the only questions which uh, i could manage to find so still if you have later more questions to ask you are always welcome to put your queries uh, Uh, on our dbmci uh, facebook premier group as well as telegram group and in telegram don't forget to tag me so that uh, i'll answer directly okay then my best wishes hope you all are going to come with flying colors wishing you best of your thank you very much for attending